Did, Atlas get buff, is he, tankier now? Can you build him for status after the update? How to look like that as an Atlas? People in our community have been asking me these questions and, in this video, I will try to answer all of these plus more. But before we do that, I would humbly ask that you like and share this video if you find it informative and, if you want more meme maxing videos, or simply want to more fun stuff that you can do in Warframe, then join the squad and hit that subscribe button below. The few recent updates were very generous to Atlas. Specifically, the status change, melee overhaul, shield and armor changes, and as well as the self damage removal, were the updates that made Atlas a better frame. The 25% damage reduction on shield, and as well as the new shield gating mechanic makes him tankier. From now on, your Atlas no longer needs to be worried about getting one-shotted by high-level enemies since the small invulnerability frame when your shield runs out will give you time to react under dire circumstances. Meanwhile, the base armor that Atlas Prime provides will give you enough damage reduction against low to mid-tier enemies. His 475 base armor alone can give you 61% damage reduction and the best part is, you can ramp it up with umbral mods, arcanes, and his rubble passive. If you have all umbral mods on your build, then you are constantly getting the 1500 bonus armor on your rubble passive, then you will gain a whopping 90% damage reduction. At the scenario wherein the 900 additional armor of arcane guardian will proc, you will have a 92% of damage reduction. I know that arcane guardian won't be that reliable anymore, since it now has a cooldown, but still, it's pretty handy. Also, you may think that the rubble passive isn't that reliable but honestly, it's not that hard to maintain the rubble passive when you just keep petrifying and punching enemies. You may think that the only useful ability of Atlas is his landslide but, all of his abilities do have roles to support this frame. Think of landslide as your main DPS ability, your tectonics as a safety net whenever you want to hide and regain health, your petrify as a form of crowd control and the most reliable skill to get the rubble passive buff, and your umbles as your bouncers, not meant for killing enemies, but serve as bully boys that pull aggro and creates a distraction in the field while you are punching enemies in the room. You may think that there's no such time for performing other abilities against high level enemies but, that's where you are wrong. A simple cast of tectonics will give you cover to cast your petrify safely. Also, casting rumblers on a crowd will petrify those enemies within the area. Even positioning yourself in the right spot will help you petrify enemies without worrying about getting hit. And lastly, the path of statues augment will give you additional petrification which is very effective in endurance runs. The fact is, almost all of Atlas abilities are slow except for landslide. However, they are very helpful when it comes to supporting your main DPS ability. It just takes a little practice to know when and where to cast petrify, rumblers, or tectonics. Now let's talk about landslide. It may just sound as simple as punching enemies, but what landslide actually does is an area of effect damage, that also gives you invulnerability in the process. The best part is, the melee changes gave a massive boost to Atlas punching power. There are players in our community that contacted me about a possible shift on how to mod Atlas landslide. They are suggesting that Atlas is now moddable with status chance, and I can't argue with that. It is now possible to mod Atlas with a status build, or even a hybrid and critical status build. But, is it worth it to mod for status or hybrid? Because we can now achieve 12 times combo multiplier easily, and acolyte mods do work for landslide now, it is safe to say that we can gain decent amount of crit and status using blood rush and weeping wounds respectively. In fact, if we add proton snap on the mix, which gives out a flat 50% bonus status chance, then we have weeping wounds proccing at 12 times combo multiplier, which will bring us to 80% status chance already. Add two dual status chance mods, drifting contact, and then spice it up with blood rush, and you will be smashing everything at 12 times combo multiplier. But that's the weakness of this build, you will need to be at 12 times combo multiplier, and you will need to latch for 2 seconds every 20 seconds to proc the status chance bonus of proton snap. It is doable but let's be honest here, this type of setup is only safe to perform in the testing room, and not in real high level missions. On the other hand, 
A critical mod can be very reliable in enhancing Atlas landslide damage. Critical mods are better right now instead of those impact mods that we are equipping in the past. The mean max option for a critical build would be equipping blood rush and sacrificial steel on your melee weapon. This will bring landslide's critical chance to 49% critical chance at 12 times combo multiplier. The critical damage gets more insane if you add arcane avenger and a daza cavat in your setup. This will bring your damage to orange crits. But don't expect it to be always, since the critical buff coming from both Adaza and Arcane Avenger don't proc usually at the same time. Also, Adaza Kavat is not dependable at high level missions since it will surely keep on dying. The best most reliable way of hitting orange crits is to keep Arcane Avenger. Add the Gladiator set mod on your Sentinel weapon trick, then have a god roll Riven with tons of critical chance. An example of a good stat stick Riven is this my Riven, with over 300% crit chance on this Riven, plus sacrificial steel and blood rush. My landslide will have a reliable 65% crit chance at max combo counter. Now, this is my mean max build for landslide and this would require you to use the Naraman focus to keep the combo counter at max. Your combo counter is very important for Atlas right now. It doesn't just help you crit a lot, but it does give landslide 25% additional damage for each combo multiplier, up to a 3.75 times damage multiplier at 12 times combo, or 4 times with Venka Prime equipped at 13 times combo. One last thing. I have heard a lot of misconception that the melee weapons you use affect the damage output of Atlas Landslide. That's very wrong. The only thing that affects Landslide is the mods you equipped on your melee weapon. I highly advise that you read the Warframe wiki about Landslide to know the different interactions of mods. I will leave the link to the page on the video description below. Another thing that I would like to discuss is about Maya not only the one good as a landslide stat stick. Maya is a good option since it has a very high riven disposition and it has a weapon augment which works with landslide. The other best stat stick for landslide would be jaw sword. It also has a very high riven disposition and also have a weapon augment. Honestly, I would prefer jaw sword for Atlas as a stat stick because the melee damage boost of blade of truth make a big difference. If somehow I can roll a damage stat on this riven, then I will be punching enemies with murderous intent. But at its current state, it's still weak in my opinion because it also has the cold element, which hampers my mean max build. I have tried various elements for Atlas Landslide, but Corrosive always comes out on top when it comes to dealing the most damage for almost all factions. In conclusion, Landslide will have a better result if you mod it with lots of damage, elemental damage, crit chance, and crit damage, and put some combo duration if you can, or use the Naraman focus for maximum efficiency. Okay, I know this guide is very long but I suggest you stick a little more for the Atlas build and the fashion frame. The build for Atlas that I'm using is the usual Umbral Atlas. All Umbral mods are present for maximum armor and health, plus additional power strength for landslide. Max efficiency and primed flow so I can spam my landslide and primed continuity to make path of statues effective. It's worth noting that duration does help this augment by a lot. The trail left by landslide will be useful if they stay on the field for a longer period. Others would choose to have stretch over streamline which is also viable. Using range mod will not only help you more targets easily, but it does allow you to keep throwing punches in a 15 meter radius. Not to mention that you will have a better radius for Umbler's petrification effect. Arcane Energize is just an option. Especially if you are using Xenurix Energizing Dash. You can put Arcane Avenger on this slot for more crit chance, since it's very effective as it also procs even during landslide and vulnerability. But with this setup, be sure to add a duration mod on your melee weapon so you can still have the benefit of the max combo counter for your landslide. So these are all the stuff you need to know about Atlas after the most recent updates. The nerf on Arcanes might be a total bummer, but the other changes were very generous to Atlas. Not only on both survivability and damage, but also in general gameplay. Do remember that Atlas passive ability makes him immune to any knockdown effect, which makes him a good choice for having some dumb fun with explosive weapons. From now on, you don't just punch enemies to their death but you can also nuke them in front of their faces. That's all of it for this guide. Now go enjoy this frame with my Destroyer Atlas fashion frame. Evolution. This is the future.
future. <laughs> 